Hello YouTube, Michelle and Manny 592 here. Well, on January 18th, 2014, I had an accident and the car that I had for a little over two and a half years and roughly 33,000 miles covered, which I affectionately called Beater Buick, was killed. I'll insert some photos here to show you what the damage was. Well, as you can see, it was not too good, not too bad. The insurance company did end up totaling it out. So, I was left without a car for a little while. So then I really started looking around seeing what I could do for a new car. And out with the old and in with the new, as they say. Because right up next is my new car. Stay tuned. Well, YouTube, here we are on this quite bitter 26th of February. Oh, wait a minute. I saw a glimpse of something over there. No, not over here with the focuses and the uh, old M45 of one of my neighbors. Nope, that wasn't it. Aha! Yes, this is what I saw earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, my second car. <laughs> hey! Financing came through on this. A couple weeks ago now I've owned it. 2010 Hyundai Accent GS. And I think it caught a little drift this morning. I just got done cleaning it off. So, let's go ahead and get started with the tour. Silver on black with a silver headliner. Nice. There we go. Okay. Since it's a little brisk out this morning, we're going to get some heat going. But first, for being a 2010, one of the reasons they were able to get me car get me this car, I should say, is it's low miles. I got it with about 19.8 on it. Right now I'm sitting at about 20,393 miles. Let's go ahead, start her up, and let her run. Mm. Excuse the lousy hammer. <laughs> Handiwork. And away we go. It's definitely cold out this morning. It's never started that slow before. <laughs> With its low go-kart starter. Anybody who owns a Hyundai of this generation will recognize that starter. Let's definitely get some heat going here. With its manually actuated director door and temperature blend door. Yes, manual. Ah, there we go. Believe it or not, it does come with air conditioning, which does work. How about that? The reason that's lit is to let you know that the AC compressor is running as a dehumidifier in the winter, which is quite the luxury. As you can see, there's a bunch of my junk here, but, but, tunes the old-fashioned way. Yes, I got a car. No, it did not come stock with a stereo. No problem. It did come pre-wired, though. This is essentially the base model, and I, if I'm not mistaken, the only options on this one... Now you get the picture. There's supposed to be a radio that goes right about here. 
non-existent. You get a couple cubby holes, which I've found to come in real handy. I got cubby holes all over the place in this car. I got them here. I got them down there. Got a little ashtray that came with the car. I got map pockets. I don't have any in the rear seat, so no problem. That's why all the maps are in the passenger door. Extra key, which was cut incorrectly, so that's why that's just still chilling there. A little sunglass container. A little hideaway cubby. And a glove box. I got stuff everywhere. Ugh. All right. And the nice part, I can do two different sets of lights if I wanted to. I could do that. Or I could do this. Or I could do this. Fun. Okay. Let's go ahead and cut those headlights on. A little white font. Hardly see it. Hazards. Pop the hood, and I'll show you under hood. And the reason I delayed this video for so long was the fact that it had a couple quirks, which I just got fixed yesterday. Now, Excuse me. It does have LED side marker lights, which is coming in quite handy. Oh, the sun's always a problem. Now, for under hood, find it with my gloves on here. There it is. Up we go. And it's a Asian mounted crop rod, which means it's on the hood. And presto, little greatness. Yep, that's all I get. 1.6, dual overhead cam, 16 valve, 4 banger. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I never thought I'd be saying that, but I have a 4 cylinder. Which, I fell in love with already, because it's actually serviceable. The headlights, you can actually get to. Washer fluid comes with this neat little dipstick. The power steering isn't routed too far because that's it right there. Plain and easy to see. Coolant. Radiator cap. Engine oil dipstick. Serviceable transmission. Indicated by none other than a trans dipstick. Obviously your master cylinder back there. And when I saw it, I couldn't believe it. Watch this. Cable throttle, ladies and gentlemen. As of 2010, they were still making these. This car is so basic that I might as well show you around in here. There's no ABS on this car, none whatsoever. It didn't even come with the option on this trim level. What a concept. No ABS, no traction control. Manual locks, windows, mirrors. But hey, that's exactly what I told the folks at the dealership that I wanted. It was a car that had an automatic transmission and air conditioning if it came with it. Oh, and don't be deceived by its cuteness. It, it, it gets up and goes, but when you add people, it slows down. This little four-banger so cute that it actually, eh, using my head, for being a four banger, it gets to where I need to go, but 
110 horsepower and 106 pound-feet of torque. That's it. That's all there is to it. 110 horsepower. Safety. I know that there is absolutely no blind spot on this car. Trust me, I've tried. But as you can see, it slopes upward. Compared to the Buick, which sloped inward, this one slopes upward as it gets to the rear of the car. Yeah, so I have that for safety. Yeah, that 10 degree wind isn't doing me any good, so we'll continue to work. It's so basic that the little partial, blah, that the parcel divider, whatever you want to call it, it don't come with little connectors. But it makes a cool noise. I'm easily amused by it. One more time. Yes, it buzzes as it goes down. Fun. All my junk in the back here. Uh, it's cold enough to where my low battery indicator came on, so I don't know how much more of a tour on this battery I can do before it dies out on me. But like I said, not much to see. The little point A to point B car. With an 11.9 gallon tank, 27 city, 36 highway, I'm averaging about 27. That's because it's winter, and it doesn't help that the AC dehumidifies. But no worries. Next up, the driving portion. See you soon. Okay, YouTube, looks like my secondary battery's doing okay. Let's go ahead and go for a ride. Belts for contact. Contacted. And away we go. YouTube, I don't know if you can tell on the westbound side of the road that I was on, but this this winter has done in our Michigan roads to the point to where it's virtually inaccessible, especially for a small car of this size. So 
so because of that fact, I've been having to go around the long way. Which is fine. It gets the job done. And as of current, I am saving up to get myself a stereo for this car. So, once I get the stereo, I've noticed that there's not too many 2010 Hyundai Accent radio install videos, so for those of us who have had to install radios on this car, I will make a video of it. that I'm not used to is not having a coolant temperature gauge. But boy, does this car heat up quick. It takes about 10 minutes roughly for this thing to heat up. Compared to uh, the reliable pin cushion, which takes uh, 20 minutes, half hour, on a day like today. Well, YouTube, for what it's worth, I appreciate you folks for uh, watching this video. Sorry if I took too much out of your day. Like I said, thanks again for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> thanks for watching.